Good morning and welcome to today's Early Learning Live. My name is Allison with Arizona Science Center and this morning we are going to be reading a story called The Dot and then talking about chromatography. Has anyone ever heard the word chromatography before? Hmm. We're going to talk more about that later, but let's start with a story. This story is called The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. Now, if we look at the cover of the story, can you make any predictions what you think it might be about? I see on the cover a, a giant dot, and then I see someone over here with a, a bucket and a brush. Hmm, I wonder what they could be doing. Let's read and find out. The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Why might her paper be empty in art class? Hmm, has this ever happened to you? Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Oh, how do you think Vashti's feeling right now? Have you ever felt frustrated before when you couldn't draw something? I know I have. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where that takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good, strong jab there. Mm. Uh-oh, how do we think Vashti's feeling now? She stabbed her paper. She's probably not very happy. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. hmm. She pushed the paper towards Vashti and quietly said, okay, now sign it. What do we think is going to happen next? We see a paper with a dot on it, and her teacher asked her to sign it. Why would you sign a paper with a dot on it? What kinds of things do we sign? Vashti thought for a moment. Well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. So, what is Vashti doing? Vashti is signing her name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn, her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Ah, so look what happened. Anyone predict that her dot was going to be a work of art? If you did, your prediction was correct. Huff, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never-before-you set of watercolors and set to work. Now, what predictions can you make? What do you think might happen next? She opened up her watercolors and it says, hmm, I can make a better dot than that. What might she be doing? Let's find out. Vashti painted and painted a yellow dot, a green dot, a red dot, a blue dot, Whew, a blue mixed with the red. She discovered that she could make a purple dot. Vashti kept experimenting. Lots of little dots in many colors. She's painting all the different colors and she, she mixed blue and red. And what color did she get? She got purple. So she's experimenting with some color mixing. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with a bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. Hmm, what does that mean by not painting a dot? She made a dot. What do we observe here? see this big empty space. So this empty space looks like a dot. At the school art show a few weeks later, Vashti's mini dots made quite the splash. Look at all the different dots she made. Did you know there could be so many different types of dots? I was surprised. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. Wow, you're a really great artist. I wish I could draw, he said. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? Not me. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Hmm. Oh no. So this little boy says he can't draw. What do you think Vashti might do? Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, what do you think 
she's going to say? Let's see. She said, please sign it. She had the little boy sign his work of art. The end. So that was the story of The Dot by Peter Reynolds. And in this story, we have Vashti, who's exploring color mixing. She's exploring some art. But did you know there's a lot of chemistry in art as well? So we're going to talk about some of the chemistry in art by talking about chromatography. So you might not have heard this word chromatography before. So chromatography is just a really fancy word for saying you're putting a mixture through something to show how things separate. So this can be used by scientists in CSI, so crime scene investigations. It can also be used in studying the pigments and fall leaves and why they change colors. So let's take a look at what I need. So we're going to look down here. So I have these two circles of paper and I have my two black markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a dot, just like Vashti, I'm drawing a dot on this paper. These are my own works of art, so I have two different types of black marker. And then what I'm going to do is drip some water on these. And what do we predict might happen when I put some water on this black marker on this piece of paper? What predictions could you make? I said we're going to be talking about chromatography, and chromatography is about how mixtures separate. Let's see. What do we observe happening? Hmm. Do you notice anything about these colors? What I'm noticing is these colors, this circle started in the middle, but when I put water on it, is the color staying in the middle? No, that color is beginning to separate. So this black marker, the pigments, the colors in this black marker are beginning to be carried out by the water. And this one is actually working really well. So we can look at this one. So do you see any colors other than black? We see some black towards the middle, but I'm noticing some colors on the outside. Do you notice any blue in here? So this black marker has different pigments in it. It doesn't just have black. Black is actually made of the different colors. So when we're looking at color mixing. So because we put this liquid on the color, it's beginning to separate these different pigments out. And the different pigments are being carried uh, at different speeds based off how heavy those molecules are. So this blue is being separated out and we're showing us that there's actually blue in this black marker. And over here you can kind of start to see some purple. It'll eventually start to show some red. It's going to take a few minutes to continue growing. And this is the principle behind chromatography. So what's happening is we're putting this liquid and choosing it to show how these pigments can separate. Now these are you know some chromatography paper but there's actually some materials you have at your house where you can do this yourself. So if you have any of these at your house, so these are coffee filters, you can do this at home. So if I take a coffee filter, and you can take a coffee filter at home, and you can experiment with different colors and see, okay, what do different colors look like when we look at how the pigments in them, what pigments are in the different colors? So you can see how those pigments separate. So I can take my coffee filter, and I want to flatten it out, and it's a good idea to put it on some newspaper because you'll likely bleed through. And I'm going to take, let's take an orange, I'm going to draw a circle on my coffee filter. Then what I'm going to need is some sort of container of water. So I have a takeout container with just a little water in the bottom. I want to have it so the water is not going to touch this line. So the idea behind this is the water is going to carry the pigment and it's going to carry it and separate the colors within this color based off how heavy those are. So I need to make sure I'm going to bunch up my coffee filter so the white part is at the bottom and my line is going to be above the water. So I'm going to kind of carefully balance. If you have a jar, you could do this in a cup. So I have my water touching only the bottom of the coffee filter. And what, what do we predict is going to happen? What happens when you put coffee filter in water? Well, I know that when a coffee filter is in water, it starts to expand, it starts to get wet all over this coffee filter. So the water is going to start moving up and it's going to pick up this orange line and it's going to separate it so you can see the different colors. This takes a little while longer than my chromatography paper. So I'm going to let this sit and I'm going to show you some of the ones that I did last night. So what color do we think this started out as? If you said pink, you are actually incorrect. So this started out 
as my red marker. And you can kind of see that red along the outside. But with this red, when the water picked up that pigment and carried it, it actually broke it out into some shades of pink. Now, some colors break into many different colors, but some are more clearly just one color. So we think about blue. Blue is a primary color. So this blue didn't really separate. It just separated out into blue. But if we take a fun marker like green, does anyone know what colors you can mix to get green? Did you say yellow and blue? Well, in a green marker, my chromatography paper, show, or my coffee filter, which I used as chromatography paper, showed that you can actually see it separating out with this yellow pigment and this blue pigment, telling me that this green marker is actually made of blue and yellow. Now, I'll show you two other fun ones. What color do we think this started as? This is a tricky one. I see, I observe here, I see blue, I see green, I see yellow, I see pink, I see, I'm not sure what color that is. What color do we think this started as? Well, this actually started as a brown marker. All these different pigments are inside this brown marker and chromatography, so chemistry, helps us see this. And last, this was if I let that black marker sit even longer. This is what my black marker overnight looked like. So, using my black marker, showing all these different pigments that can be found inside of it. So this, guys, is the science of chromatography. So we're using chemistry to study color, and this is something you can do at home. Grab some coffee filters, grab some markers, and see what colors and what pigments are in those markers. And you know, not all brands of markers behave the same way. A Crayola black marker is going to behave different than a Mr. Sketch black marker. So see what you can experiment with. See what colors move the fastest. What colors uh, fully separate quicker? What colors go to the outside? What stay on the inside? See what you can explore. So thank you all for joining us this morning for our Early Learning Live, talking about colorful chromatography and reading the story, The Dot. We're here every morning at 9.30 with different early learning activities and 1 p.m. for demos with more resources at azscience.org. Thank you all. Have a great day.